Shalom, brothers and sisters. This week's Thursday's thought, I'm going to bear you my testimony on Signe Rigdon. Last week's video, I last week's Thursday thought, I talked about James Strang and my testimony of him as a prophet, seer, and revelator, and translator in the Restoration. And <clears throat> that was interestingly received. There were some people that got very, very upset without even bothering to watch the video, which I find to be very unfortunate. I was accused of accused of being a, a, a Strangite, which I'm not. I'm also not a Rigdonite. I am a Latter-day Saint, and I have a testimony of many prophets, seers, and revelators within our movement. And the point of these testimonies isn't to say everybody needs to go and join this group or everybody needs to go and join this group. The point of my testimony, of the testimonies I'm, I'm sharing with you, is to show you that we can believe and know that multiple people are called of God. And this week's an easy one because Sidney Rigdon is universally accepted at least up to a certain point. And then he supposedly leaves the church according to Brighamites. But in reality, Sidney Rigdon, I'm sure, would have said, no, they left the church. They left, they left me behind and, and went out to Nauvoo. So who is Sidney Rigdon? What makes him a prophet of God? Well, Sidney Rigdon is a very interesting man. He grew up being a, a very well-read child. He gained some traction in, I believe, this, the Candlelight Movement. And he had a small congregation, or a decent-sized congregation, I guess, in Kirtland, Ohio. And when missionaries from the Church of Jesus Christ, as it was known at first, showed up, he wanted to see spiritual gifts. He wanted to see signs. So he, he was asking for signs. And they could not provide, provide that. It's one of the reasons why the Kirtland Temple was built, was because they wanted to be imbued with this power so that they could do, so they could perform miracles. Well, Sidney Rigdon vowed to get to the bottom of this. He wanted to know more about the Book of Mormon. He wanted to know more about Joseph Smith. He goes to New York. And the next thing you know, he's helping Joseph translate the, the Bible. Basically, he is... I've read some things that state that he did go back to the original Hebrew and Greek. I've read some things that said that he, well, quite frankly, ripped off other sources. And I've also read that he just received revelations on what to insert and where. The Inspired Bible is something I'll have to talk about in a different video. But either way, this was an opportunity for Joseph Smith and Sidney Rigdon to learn how to work together receiving revelations. We know that Sidney Rigdon was a prophet because, for example, when receiving the revelation that is Doctrine and Covenants 76, Doctrine of the Saints 42, it's known as the vision, they were both looking, some people describe it as if they were looking outside of a window, but no one could see anything except for the two of them. And one would say, tell me what I see. And the one would say, oh, this, 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 I see that too. And then the other would say, tell me what I see. I see this, 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 I see that too. So that translation of the Bible was able to help these two prophets learn how to receive revelation in sync and work together in receiving revelation. And we know that they were equals in authority because Doctrine of the Saints 7b, which would be, now this is 7b verse 6, it would be 87.3a for Community of Christ, RLDS, and 90, section 90 of verse 6 for the Salt Lake City Church and the other Brighamite sects. And again, verily I say unto thy brother and Sidney Rigdon and Frederick G. Williams, their sins are forgiven them also, and they are accounted as equal with thee in holding the keys of this last kingdom. So, in my mind, these three men weren't just a president with two counselors. They were three co-presidents based on this revelation. Now, that said, if you read through the Doctrine and Covenants, you will note that there's times when Sidney Rigdon is celebrated and there's times when he is admonished. I was about to say condemned, but that's not the right word, admonished. And, and I will say that Joseph Smith did try to get rid of Sidney Rigdon at one point. But back then, 
in in the original church, and and I do know that some sects still work this way. The vote was a real vote. It wasn't just a hey, I'm calling this person. Everybody needs to come and raise their hands. You know, a, a fake vote, a pretend vote. These people actually were asked to vote as moved by the Spirit. And when Joseph Smith tried to dump Sidney Rigdon out of the first presidency, the Spirit told the saints, no, he's supposed to stay here. And I have to say that as men, I'm sure that they did not always get along trying to run this impoverished and constantly persecuted organization that didn't make his prophetic gifts any less real. He shared in many prophetic visions with Joseph Smith. His greatest weakness in my mind was probably his, it seems to be his depression, and he would get overzealous. He would get really sad and he'd get really happy. And right around the time before Joseph Smith died, when Joseph Smith was running for president, my understanding is that Rigdon was on fire. He was just a man obsessed. You know, Hiram Smith was going to take over as president of the church. He and Joseph Smith were going to run for president of the United States. And I've said before, I, I don't think that Joseph Smith actually had a shot of winning, but it was a great way to let people know about the movement and the plight of the saints, because all they were really hearing was sensationalist newspapers. From what I gather in newspapers at that time, it wasn't, well, it was a lot like media today. Not a lot of fact-checking, just lots of opinion, just trying to sell newspapers and make money. So when Joseph Smith died, when the martyrdom happened, Hiram Smith should have taken over, obviously, because he was the one that, he was given the keys. That's my understanding anyway, and he was supposed to take over. But because they were both killed, Sidney Rigdon was the only person with the keys to actually be president of the church. He was the president of the church. And so when Brigham Young came in and tried to take over, which he was successful in starting his new branch, and then he used various forms of deception to make it look like Joseph Smith had left him in charge when that clearly wasn't the case. Sidney Reedon, being a prophet, seer, and revelator, receives revelation saying, you know, you're supposed to be the guardian of the church. Now, he took that to mean that he was supposed to watch over until Joseph Smith III could take over. When in reality, we know that James Strang had received the revelation, the letter of appointment, had been ordained by an angel. And so really, Sidney Rigdon was supposed to be the bridge to help James Strang get where he needed to be to help run this young movement. And when the split happened, basically the people that had followed Sidney Rigdon into the Latter-day Saint movement and the people that supported him there, they all followed him to Pennsylvania. And there are some people that say that Sidney Rigdon abandoned the movement going to Pennsylvania, but the reality was that he had moved to Pennsylvania as part of the plan this is my understanding from what I've read. Again, I'm not a historian. He'd actually moved to Pennsylvania to set things up so that he could actually run as vice president. He had to have his family established there. And since his family was established there, it just made sense for the saints that followed him to move to Pennsylvania. Now, the saddest thing from my perspective as someone who's trying to collect all of these things so we can read all these different revelations is that when he died, he had told his wife to burn all of his papers. So we are missing a lot of Sidney Rigdon's information. But one of the things I discovered I found interesting is that Sidney Rigdon is one of the people who admitted that Emma Smith had been ordained with the priesthood. She was a, I presume, a high priestess. And his wife was a prophetess. She received revelations, but again, I can't find them anywhere. So if anyone does have access to Sidney Rigdon's revelations or his wife, I believe him, Phoebe's revelations, I would love to add them to Doctrines of the Saints. I think that they are very, very important to our movement. But having everything burnt, that that's a lot of, of good information lost. And it's one of the things that really depresses me. He's not the only prophet, and she's not the only prophetess that this has happened to. So what is my testimony of Sidney Rigdon? I do believe that 
when the saints sustained him to start this church, I think that he, he made a mistake not following James Strang. But because of the fact that there were saints willing to follow him, that means he was called of God. But one of the revelations I received basically said that God had taken away his gift. And I think that's why a lot of his revelations weren't coming true. I think he was being overzealous. He was being too egotistical. And so maybe the revelations were from God, but he wasn't understanding them properly and was just insisting things happen that couldn't happen on the time frame he wanted instead of waiting for God's time. And so these things kind of fell apart. But at the end of his life, he did not give up his testimony of the Book of Mormon. And I think that's very important. He, he died believing that Joseph Smith was a prophet of God. The Book of Mormon was the word of God. And yes, he did rail against Joseph Smith's polygamy. He did say that Joseph Smith died because he was a fallen prophet, because of his polygamy. But he, he never gave up on the fact that Joseph had at least at one point in his opinion been a prophet. And so I do believe that, you know, that church that he formed reorganized as the Church of Jesus Christ. And so they're still Reaganites. They're still Latter-day Saints. They don't like being called Mormons, but I accept them as Mormons. And I believe, I, I know that they have the same keys as every other branch of the Latter-day Saint movement. Because you can't get any higher than the keys that were given to Sidney Rigdon because they were the same keys that Joseph Smith had. They're, these are keys that the 12 did not and still to this day do not have in the, in the Brighamite movement. And I don't say that to slight that movement. I, I will be bearing my testimony on Brigham Young at some point as prophecy and revelator because if people were moved by the Spirit to call him and to go out to Utah, then obviously that was something that the Lord desired. But I'll talk about that in another video. I do want to share with you the revelation that I received quickly about Sidney Rigdon because it is part of my testimony. If you want to know why I have a testimony of Sidney Rigdon, this, this is a part of that. And this is in Doctrines of the Saints, section 13A. All right, so starting verse 22, it says, Behold, did not my servant Sidney Rigdon also have these same keys and more? Oh, sorry, I should probably start it. Verse, verse 20. And I had called Brigham Young to lead the twelve to the mouth of my servant Joseph, and this I did through the voice of my people, as the Holy Spirit moved them to choose for themselves a leader. So here we've got, you know, I'll, I'll probably go over this again when I talk about Brigham Young. But here we've got, he's called by the prophet Joseph Smith, and then that's sustained by the voice of the people. And then it says in verse 22, For behold, did not my servant Sidney Rigdon also have these same keys, the keys of the apostleship, and more? And more because he had the keys of the first presidency. Did I not come in? Did I not come unto him in visions, even as I did my servant Joseph Smith Jr.? Did he not also bear witness and testify of my word? And that being is his testimony of Jesus Christ, and I'm sure also the Book of Mormon is the word of God. Yet he exalted himself and was cut off from my presence for a time. Yea, in treacherous actions, he did reject the keys that I, the Lord your God, had given him. And thus I took them, even his keys, over the larger portion of the church, as he was blinded by his own self-worth in leading those that would follow him. But behold, even my grace is sufficient to save his soul, despite the weakness of his flesh. For he did keep the new covenant, even his testimony of me and of the Book of Mormon. So, again, this is the Lord speaking here, talking to me, telling me, yes, Signe Rigdon was a prophet of God. Yes, Sidney Rigdon had greater keys and greater authority than the Brighamite church has even today. But because of his egoism, because of his pride, he, he fell down a notch. The Lord had to take him down a couple notches. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because through the grace of Jesus Christ, because of the fact that he did not give up on his testimony of God, that grace saves him. And so he will still be there in the celestial kingdom with, with the rest of us. So this isn't going to be a long one like James Strang because Sidney Rigdon is a bit more familiar. It's very easy to go out and find information on Sidney Rigdon. But I just want you to know that I genuinely do believe that Sidney Rigdon is a prophet of God. 
And I do want to put out there a second time here, my plea, if you have access or know where I can get access to Sidney Rigdon's revelations, to his wife Phoebe's revelations, I think these are important to our movement. And I would love to have access to them. I would love to give that access to the whole world. Because he and his wife, this is a prophet and prophetess of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so whatever they were told, it's something that we as Latter-day Saints should desire to have access to. That's my testimony, and I'll leave it with you. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen.